The goal of this video is to just get you up and running using Creo to do some 3D modeling. Really handy tool I use a lot is the caliper. And then I just can't do anything unless I draw it out, plan it, take the measurements uh, before I get started. In addition to having a laptop uh, with Creo installed, you really want to have a three button mouse. That center scrolling wheel button will come in really handy. It'll really give you the ability to move around the screen a whole lot better. So go ahead and open up PTC Creo, create a new part, give it a name, and then click OK. In this case, I'm naming it a uh, ZTE uh, case for a cell phone I'm going to use on our robot. So Creo is going to give you a three-dimensional world, and you can see our three different faces. And the first tool we're going to use is the Extrude tool. So click the front, and we want to draw the face of a shape that we want to create. In this case, I want to create a rectangle, because my uh, cell phone case is going to be kind of like a rectangle. Click in the center, and then click out for the corner. Press the center button to stop making rectangles. And now we want to double click on the dimensions to change it to the actual size rectangle that we want. So the width of my rectangle is 2 and 65 hundredths and the length is 5 and 4 tenths inches. Now you can see that this is really small. It shrank it down a lot. You can press Control D. That resets the view. Then go up and click this button to make it face you so that you can continue working on it. Well, that's the rectangle, so I click OK. Now we need to extrude it into three dimensions. So I'm going to go up here and tell it how thick I want it. And I want it 8 tenths of an inch. So I type in 0.8. And now I rotate it a little bit, and I click OK. To rotate it, click your middle button and move the mouse around. So you got to hold that middle button, that wheel in, and then you'll be able to rotate the view. All right, now I want to cut some pieces out of this, and I'm going to still use the Extrude tool. So click Extrude. And this time I'm going to click on the front of the rectangle and draw on that. Now this is a really important part that it took me a while to figure out. I want to cut out four rectangles from the corners of this uh, larger rectangle. So I'll go up to uh, More and I choose Rectangle and you see I can't click. So I need to hold the Alt button and put it on the corner and then click again. So Alt click, drag, and then click again to finish the rectangle. So I went up to more, got rectangle by the corners, now I press alt and highlight that so it'll say edge and vertex and then click on it and drag it and if you get it close to the size of the other rectangle uh, Creo will think that it's the same size and then click again. All right, I want to cut out from the other corner. So again, Alt to highlight that corner so that it says the vertex and edge. And then click on that corner and drag the rectangle out. And then click again. Final corner. Alt. Highlight it so it's green. And then click. Now click again and grab and drag and make that fourth rectangle. Because I made them all the same, it is assuming that they're all uh, the same dimensions. Middle click on the wheel so that it'll stop drawing rectangles. And the height of all these rectangles I'm going to change to two inches. And since they're all the same, they all change. And then I'm going to change the width of all of these so I turn it so I can see this dimension a little bit better. Double click on it and then I'm going to change it to half an inch so that they all change to half an inch wide. Okay so now I want to cut these out but they're drawn so I click OK 
and I'm going to rotate this, and you can see that it actually extruded and pulled that shape out. Well, I'm going to click up here for Remove, change the direction, and then I'm going to tell it to cut all the way through. And when it's good, I click the check mark. I can rotate, and we'll see that I've turned it into the shape that I want. All right, now let's say we made a mistake. We don't want to start all over. What you do is you go over to the left-hand side of the screen in the model tree, find the mistake that you made a mistake on, which was our second extrusion, and click on the section and then click on the dimension symbol, and it will bring up the dimensions so that you can change them. So let's say I want to change the width of those rectangles we, that we cut out to 35 hundredths. That would change then the shape. So if you ever make a mistake, you can go back into the model tree and change the dimensions. All right, so now we want to cut out a part from this shape for the phone to sit in. So we're going to do another extrusion, click on the front face, and now we need to draw on this shape, what we want to cut out. So I'm going to go up to center rectangle. Is the tool that I want to use. Now I want to use the edges of this shape, so I'm going to use Alt and then highlight it and click on them so that I can create edges for me to grab onto when I make the shape. So Alt, highlight, and click on those edges. Now I can click on the center and then bring them to the edge and line it up and click. So I want to cut out a rectangle shape on this phone case. Now they, by default, created a height dimension for this rectangle, but I don't want to use that. So I'm going to use the normal tool to create my own dimension. I'm going to do it from the top edge here to the edge of that new rectangle. So I'm going to zoom in here, and that's done by using the scroll wheel. And I'm going to alt-click here from the corner, and then alt-click to this edge, and then middle-click, and it'll create a dimension. And I want to say that it's 35 hundredths from the edge. And that'll take care of it. That's set the size of the rectangle. So I'm going to click OK and then finish the extrusion. Well, that actually added material. What I want to do is click the Remove Material button, switch directions, but this time I don't want to cut all the way through. I only want to cut down 55 hundredths of an inch. So I'm going to type that into the box for the exact amount that I wanted to cut down into my shape. And you can see that it cut down just the way I want it. And then I can click OK. All right, so you can see that the extrude tool is a very important tool. I'm going to click it again so I can cut the lips into the inside of the phone case to hold the phone in place. And I had to rotate it so that I could draw on the inside of the shape. So I'm going to use another corner rectangle. I use my Alt key to find the edges in the corners that I want to draw on. And I draw a rectangle where I want to cut out just enough for the phone to sit underneath it. So here's my rectangle. The phone's 45 hundredths thick, so I could go with that or maybe a little bit uh, larger amount so it'll slip in nice and easy. Or I can have it dimensioned from the top and make my own dimension and say I want it one-tenth of an inch thick. When I have it the way I want it, I click OK. It added material, so I actually want to change it to remove material and then change the direction. I don't want it to remove at all. I only want it to remove a quarter inch. Click OK. Now I'm going to need to do this for the other three lips. So I'm going to draw a rectangle and cut out a quarter inch from each print. All right, now that I have all the lips to hold in the phone, I have maybe three more cuts. 
the top of the phone has some buttons, so I want to be able to access those. So I'm going to trim the top. So I'm going to do an extrusion. Click on that top face. And now I'm going to cut two rectangles out so that the lip on the top won't be in the way of the buttons. Alright, so I'm going to draw these rectangles using the rectangle uh, from the corner. Remember to use the Alt key to select vertices and edges that you might want to use. So I press the Alt key on that corner, I click on that edge, and I can draw the rectangle from that corner to the edge so that it all lines up perfectly with the shape. Press the Alt key on that vertex, and now you can click and drag that rectangle from the point to the edge. Remember, you can always use the dimensions that they give you, but you can also create your own dimensions by using the normal tool. Then you have the rectangles the way you want them. Click OK, just like before. And then we are going to remove material, not add it. Just click Remove. Tell it to go the other direction. And you might want to tell it to go all the way through the material. And then click the check mark to say you're finished. Now you have a much smaller lip so you can access the buttons on the top of the phone. Creo has many other tools other than the extrude tool. One of the tools is a chamfer tool. And if you look at the pictures of these tools, they kind of give you an idea. Chamfer is really easy. You just click the edges that you want to add a chamfer to. And the chamfer is where it knocks the edge off and it won't be a right angle corner. So you choose all of the edges you want to chamfer on. And then you can tell it how much of a chamfer you want and then you click OK. So if I rotate it, you'll be able to see what all of the edges now look like. All right, now there's one last thing I want to do. I want to cut out a portion of this so that I can bolt this to the robot. So I'm going to use the shell tool. So I click on the shell tool, and you'll see that I chose a face, and it created a depression in it. And you can control how much of a depression there is in the thickness box. And when you've got it the way you want it, you click OK. So I'm pretty much finished. This is the model that I want to print out so that I can attach my phone to my robot. All right. Now, depending on what 3D printer you're using, this might be different. But now I go up to File, and I want to save my part as an STL file. So I give it a name, and then I make sure that the type is .stl. Once it's saved, then you will need to give it to your 3D printer depending on how your 3D printer wants it. We're using an EcoCycle, so we need to make sure that we upload it to cubify.com, and then that gives us a new file that we can put on a USB drive and give to the printer. Here's a version of it, not the exact same one, and here you can see the phone in the case.